What's up? And welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. I'm here with Sasha from ASUS. We're at the ASUS headquarters in Taipei, and we've got a whole bunch of the RTX 5000 series laptops broken down. We've got the motherboards and the CPUs and the GPUs, and we can see all the chips and the VRMs and the memory modules, and Sasha's gonna break Vapor them down chambers, for us. chambers, heat sinks, heat pipes, fans, yeah. So you can see the underside of all the different laptops uh, and see how they compare size-wise. Is the Ryzen chip bigger than the Intel chip? Is the, how big, bigger is a 5090 compared to a 5060? And what do these motherboards actually look like? The things that are really hard to actually see because they're always underneath all the coolers and heat pipes and vapor chambers. So let's take a look. We've got uh, XG Mobile, Strix, Zephyrus, Flow Z13. Whole 5060 lineup. And yeah, if you always wanted to see what's inside your laptop, you know, now you can see all these cool new parts without opening it. Uh, avoiding the warranty, breaking everything, so yeah. Cool, so Sasha's gonna run us through all these things. Let's get started. So this is the XG Mobile 2025 GC34. So really compact, you can see it's smaller than the original Nintendo, uh, Nintendo Wii. Um, super compact, under one kilo, and inside you get an RTX 5090, which is pretty insane because this is the RTX 5090. Think about how small this part is, and this is actually a USB hub. So you also get a ton of I.O. You get a uh, five gig LAN, you get uh, HDMI and display port, so full, full size. size display port. You get two type A and two type C. And yes, this thing is Thunderbolt. So the previous ones, we used our own proprietary connector, which means you could only use it with our uh, RG Flow models. This one is Thunderbolt 5, so you can use it with a lot of different devices. Now it's Thunderbolt 5, but it does work with Thunderbolt 4, and it does work with USB 4 as well, with Thunderbolt uh, support. So, you know, USB 4 eGPU support is a thing as well. And this is the vapor chamber. So vapor chamber, I have this here because it's crazy small, and it's crazy light. This is where it calls the VRAM. So this one goes on here like this. And then you have a blower fan on here that sits over here. And the cool thing about this thing is why I have the vapor chamber here is it's crazy compact and crazy lightweight. So let me show you how much it weighs. The vapor chamber only weighs 91, 92 grams. So it's crazy lightweight. And this can cool at 50, 90, 150 watts. And then the fan is only around 55 grams, super lightweight. Power supply, also cool, because this has a built-in power supply, 350 grams, 330 watts. So you get one watt per gram, which is insane. This power supply is built in. Um, so yeah, in the XG Mobile, you have a USB hub built in and it powers your laptop and it powers the RTX 5090 as well. There's gonna be a 5070 Ti version as well of the XG Mobile coming soon, later in 2025. This one is the Tough A18. And this is a brand new device for us, a brand new laptop. We've had 18 inch for our Strix series for a while, but this is now a Tough. So Tough is our value price performance series, the best bang for the buck, and you can now get an 18-inch uh, tough gaming laptop, which means if you want an 18-inch gaming laptop, you no longer have to go for a Strix, which costs more, but you can go for something more basic and more entry level. Um, and this one here has an RTX 5060 GPU, and it has an AMD CPU that you can see here, Ryzen AI. Mm -hmm. This is the heatsink, lots of heat pipes, two big fans. This is the video memory right here, and this, right. Uh, this is the this CPU VR. VRM. And mm -hmm. this is the GPU VRM, correct. And notice how since it's a 5060, there's less of them yeah. than a higher end 4090 or and 5090. Two SODIUM slots, so you can change out the memory, you can upgrade the memory, M.2 slots, two SSDs, and there's also the Wi-Fi solution is slotted. So it's an M.2 2230 Wi-Fi solution. By default, it comes with a MediaTek solution, which not everybody's a fan of, so you can put any Wi-Fi card under that you want. And so this heat pipe covers the VRMs for the GPU. Correct. Looks like, and this one goes to the CPU VRMs right here. Mm -hmm. And then you get some nice shared heat pipes to give you good this air actually, flow. This is actually the same heat pipe. So it goes from the GPU VRM, then over the GDDR memory, the VRAM, mm -hmm. then over the CPU VRM, and then over here to the exhaust. So mm -hmm. that's one long heat pipe. And then you have one eight millimeter and two six millimeter that are basically connecting uh, both of the uh, dissipators, so the fan exhaust, or the left side and the right side for CPU and GPU. Nice, and the, it's good that these are shared too, that way if you're under CPU only workload, both fans can work. We used to have a lot of CPU only heat pipes and then GPU only heat pipes, and they weren't all shared. This new design allows you to really combine the load uh, for both of the fans for only a single item 
better. So it allows the GPU to go to a higher wattage or the CPU depending on which priority you're looking for. This one is our tough a16, so 16 inch and AMD. So for a tough series, F means Intel and A means AMD. And which CPU is this? This is Fire Range. So brand new chip, uh, AMD Fire Range. I think it's the 8940HX. This is actually a desktop chip, as you can see from the package as well. It's a lot bigger than the Intel chips and the other AMD laptop chips. So we're looking at here, this is the uh, two CCXs yeah. and this is the controller. Yeah, this is the, the main SOC cluster. The and that, in SOC. that includes the integrated GPU Correct. inside of here. Mm -hmm. And you'll see when we get to the Flow Z13 that this main SOC is just a lot smaller on here because the iGPU is a lot less powerful. Mm -hmm. That's probably the main reason. So this one, what you notice, uh, first of all, there's three chips, right? So this one is the Southbridge. This is an HX CPU. So this is not the regular chip that you find in laptops. This is not an Arrow Lake H. Uh, made for laptops, it's an Arrow Lake HX, which is originally made for desktops. So you get tons of performance in the CPU for this. And that's also why you have the uh, Southbridge here because it's originally the chip was made for desktop. And again, 5060, the HX CPU is only gonna be available in the US and in China. Yeah, this one looks like a really great option for people that want CPU performance. Mm -hmm. This here is the A14. So as you can see from the more compact size, um, this is our tough 14 inch. So basically a value alternative to the Zephyrus G14 if you want something uh, more bang for the buck. And you can also get this with an RTX 5060. And CPU, same, AMD Strix Point. And uh, yeah, you can see a uh, very compact motherboard. So tons of performance in a super compact chassis, 1.6 kilos. And we have our two M.2s right here. It's rare for a 14 inch. Very rare for 14 inch. <laughs> this is the Strix G16 Intel version, tri-fan design with a vapor chamber, even on the 5060, which is definitely overkill for a 5060 because it's, vapor chambers are typically designed for 50, 80, 50, 90, 175 watt type of situations, but here we're doing 115 watts on the <laughs> vapor chamber. And you can really see the, uh, the amount of VRMs here on the Intel 275HX, a lot more of them. Uh, whereas, you know, the 5060 here only has six. Here we have our Q-Latch system. We stole that from our motherboard team. Uh, toolless way to install and remove your SSDs. And on all the new 2025 Strix models with Intel, because that's a new chassis, you don't need a screwdriver, you don't need any tools. Super convenient. This is the 2025 AMD Strix G. So as you can see here, fire range CPU um, with a 5060. So 9955 HX or HX3D. HX and HX3D look exactly the same. There's no way mm. to tell them apart. For the previous generation, the Dragon range, you could tell because only the 3D version had the gold uh, coating on top. Mm. But for fire range, the regular one and the 3D cache version look exactly the same. They all have the gold coating, which is also unfortunately why we can't use liquid metal on the CPU for the fire range chips. Mm. This is the 2024 chassis, which we refreshed versus the previous one, the Intel one, that's a brand new chassis, brand new internal layout for everything, for the motherboard, for the vapor chamber. And this one is pretty cool because it's actually a desktop. So <laughs> I don't know if you want to cover it because you focus on, on laptops, right? The main thing here is this is a mobile chip. It's a custom compact motherboard uh, format. Uh, it's our tough T500 gaming desktop. It's a super compact desktop. We have it downstairs as well. I think you, you saw it. Um, it's about the same size as a shoebox, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, why do we use a mobile CPU and it's a 13th gen, so it's not even the latest one. Well, it's all about price performance. Tough is all about the best bang for the buck. And we found that mobile uh, CPUs, they cost less than the desktop counterpart. And we figured if we use a mobile chip, it's a lot cheaper. And if we then invest some money into having a really good heatsink on top, we can run it at a high wattage and it's going to perform better than desktop chips at a capped wattage. What They're, GPU does it come with? GPU, this one goes up to a 5060 Ti both an 8 gig version and a 16 gig version. The okay. i5 5060Ti 8 gig version is gonna be around 1099, mm. and the i7 5060Ti with 16 gigs is gonna be around 1299 USD for the whole desktop, for the whole PC. I know a laptop that comes with a keyboard and mouse and a display for less. <laughs> <laughs> this one is the Strix G16 2025, also AMD Fire Range X3D. This one definitely is Fire Range X3D. This is the 5070 Ti. And so this is how as high as we go with the X. 3D mm. chip. I know that you and others out there would love to see this with a 5080 and 5090. Yeah. That's unfortunately not what we're offering right now. And that's the cooler for it. Yeah. 
So every time you see that tape, well, not every time, but usually it's because we this see kind of metal. Yeah, yeah, it's like liquid metal protection. This scar. one is a SCAR 16 and now it's a SCAR 18. So it's the same motherboard. The only difference is the vapor chamber is a little bit longer and the fan on this side is a little bit longer as well. The fan chamber, the fan is the same. And yeah, this is our top of the line flagship for 2025. Intel Strix Scar 16 and, six, uh, and 18. Okay. This is a 5090. So notice how many more VRMs there are on the 5090, as well as the additional VRAM modules. Two sodium slots still, and the same QLEDGE system on both sides for the SSDs. So you can easily access both the memory and the SSDs. Nice. So that's what the SCAR looks like on the inside there. On yep. both the CPU and the GPU, we use a Conductor Note Extreme, which is pure indium and gallium. There's no tin in there, which makes it a lot more expensive, but increases the thermal conductivity even higher compared to regular liquid metal. Here we have the Zephyrus G16 GA605. So that's the AMD Zephyrus G16 because we, because we have both an Intel and an AMD version. This one is the AMD version, you can see right here, so, and 5060. So it can be 5060 or 5070. Correct. For this model. And this is the strict point CPU. Notice the lowest, less VRMs, less video memory modules, and also the VRMs for the CPU is also less because it's not as high of a power throughput as the Intel 275HX. You also have the two SSD slots right here and the Wi-Fi module. Wow, these are, it's a whole lot smaller. You compare the SCAR and the Zephyrus heatsink, you know, vapor chamber, so the Zephyrus and the SCAR series here, big mm -hmm. difference. And then over here we have the same thing, but this one is the Intel version. So this is the Zephyrus G16 with an Intel Arrow Lake CPU and a 5060. And there's the heatsink. And uh, you can see the heatsink, I just got it right now, literally an hour ago. So I haven't been able to, to clean it up yet. You can see the face change pad and the thermal pads we have for the VRM and the VRAM. Mm. Um, so it's pretty much the same cooling solution, no matter if you get Intel or AMD, if you're going with a 5060 or 5070, it's the same kind of motherboard layout. Triple and fan. This is the Intel. G16, Zephyrus G16. Uh, 5090? Intel with 5090, correct. Uh, we also have a Zephyrus G16 with Intel CPU all the way up to a 5090. So 5070 Ti, 5080, and 5090. Those are all pin-to-pin -pin compatible. It's a different motherboard. You can see the motherboard layout is different. A lot more space is needed for the GPU, VRAM, and VRM. Um, and we had to shift things around a little bit. Um, but yeah, here you can go up to a 5090, and then we have to use a vapor chamber because it's much more power. This one is a double fan, correct? So the, the heat pipes utilize three fans. The vapor chamber only utilizes two. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Basically with a vapor chamber, what happens is you can touch all the different parts on the motherboard and cool them all at once with the vapor chamber. But for a heat pipe solution, you either have to get creative and attach extra pieces to the heat pipes that then touch all the different motherboard components that you want to cool, or you add a third fan that blows over all those components and cools them with air mm. directly. Um, okay. That's why for the vapor chamber, we don't need the third fan. We have it in some models, but you don't necessarily need it, depending on uh, where the components are that you want to cool. 5060, 5080, both Zephyrus G14, and you can really see the difference here with the VRM or the VRMs and then the video memory modules. So many more on the 5080 there. Right, you can see the layout is completely different, right? So we had to get creative because in a 14 inch, you don't have a lot of space for the motherboard. And one smart thing that our engineers did that's pretty cool is um, you can see here, they needed a lot more space for the GPU area. They raised the M.2 SSD slot higher up. So this one is raised up higher from the motherboard than this one. And they were able to squeeze some components and logic under the SSD itself. The main difference between these two is how were we able to get a 5070 Ti and a 5080 into this Zephyrus G14. Well, we did it by making the chassis two millimeters thicker, just two millimeters. And you can't really tell unless you have them side by side. Um, and the main reason is the fans. So this is the G14 with a 5060, and this is with a 5080. And you can see the fans are two millimeters thicker. Big difference. Nice, yeah, you can definitely tell the difference there. The thicker fans have much higher airflow. It's like a 50% airflow boost, if not even more. 
and we also um, change the heat pipe layout. So the main heat pipe, which is this one, we upgraded it from a six millimeter diameter here to an eight millimeter over here. And you can see that here we have one six millimeter VRM that touches the CPU and GPU VRM and also the VRAM and system memory. And here we have one over here and we have a second one over here. So we added one more six millimeter heat pipe. We boosted one of them from six millimeter to eight millimeter. We increased the fan height by two millimeters and we moved some stuff on the motherboard around. That's basically the story behind how we're able to get 5070 Ti and 5080 into the Zephyrus G14. So it's very what, similar. What's to the GPU wattage difference? In the Zephyrus G14, 120. And what about the 5060? Uh, 100. So 20 watts more. So with all of this trickery, you know, um, boosting one of the heat pipes from six to eight millimeter and adding a second six millimeter, we're able to get an extra 20 watts uh, out of the cooling solution um, to get a 5080 and 5070 Ti. Is that only a two fan versus three fan? Uh, correct. This one only has two fans and this one has a triple fan. So a little bit clever thing that we did here with this one as well is um, you can see that the fan chambers are actually open here on the side. So some of the air gets blown out of here and blows flows over the uh, heat sink module over there. And the same thing on the other side. So you mm. can see that's why we have these rubber guides here. It's very soft rubber that basically just guides the airflow in the direction that we want. So we want the air to come out of here flow over here and then it rises up and uh, leaves on the exhaust. This is the Flow Z13 2024 keyboard versus the 2025 version. Correct. This is the 2024. This is the 2025. You can see, first of all, huge improvement in the touchpad. This is like really usable. This was, you know, challenging. And you can see that the keycaps are larger, so it's more comfortable to type on. Uh, you have more usable space on the keyboard area. This is the CNC chassis for the Z13. This is a uh... I think this might have better backlight too. I think it's like more clear, evenly yeah. lit across the keycaps. Yep. Um, so this is CNC milled aluminum. Correct. This is a single piece of CNC aluminum. Well, the kickstand is also attached there. That's a separate piece, obviously. But uh, yeah, it's a... Also aluminum. This is the Flow Z13 motherboard now. This is the motherboard for the Flow Z13. Uh, Z13. And what you can see here is we got a vapor chamber, um, two fans, and a whole lot of VRM and VRAM, wow. but it's all just for both CPU and GPU. So you have everything smashed together. Like you mentioned earlier, uh, when you look at the Fire Range chip, you have the CC axis. Those, I think, are the same CC axis like on the Fire Range chip, but the main uh, cluster, the main chiplet is huge because it has a super powerful GPU in it. Um, and you have all of that combined essentially into one chip. You can see uh, the same capped on tape because we use like a metal on it. And we have a huge VRM cluster here for the different power planes. It's crazy because it's only 80 watts. I wonder why do, you, why do you need so many for only 80 watts of throughput? It's not that we need more VRM components for more power, but if you have different planes, if you have different voltage planes and power planes, you need a different VRM for those specific planes. So even though mm. you maybe cram everything into a single chip, and it is, even if it's a single silicon die, you might still have different power planes inside that same die, and you need different VRMs to provide a certain voltage to that specific part of the chip. So that's why you have so many VRM components. Big shout out and thank you to Sasha and Asus for having me. I appreciate it, man. I really, I love this. Being able to dive into the, uh, the motherboards and laptops. It's rare when you can take them apart. I mean, unless you're actually building them, you don't really get to see them pretty much unless you repaste your own laptop, which happens maybe once every few years. Yeah, you should, you should be very careful if you do that with liquid metal as well. Yeah. yeah. I hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes look at all these motherboards and their layouts, all the efforts Sasha went into to get all of these, source them and set them up for us. So big shout out and thank you, man. Thank you for coming over. Yeah, appreciate Thanks. it. All right, man. All right. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Brandon and Sasha out.